you know you're getting old when the winter likes to kill me now, I'm going to be glad when it gets cold again. I'm tired of being so hot. Uh, but anyway, good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Do we have any announcements?
Father, where would we be without you? Just lost. We thank you this morning. We invite you into this service. We pray that you just touch each and every heart that's here. Of course, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Those who are able, stand this morning. Heavenly Father, it is a joy to be here and in your house and a joy to be with your people and see so many smiling faces, God. We just thank you for each one of them. Lord, we ask that you would bring them good health and prosperity, Lord. We also ask that you would give them a giving spirit that might give freely back to you. Lord, just I bless this all.
Lord, and we're still here to worship, so that's what we're ready to do right now. Our band is not here today, or some of us here, but we're not going to be leading worship with the band. The choir's going to be leading worship this morning. So, uh, you know, God always sends what we need when we need it. And so at this time, we're here to worship. These are familiar songs. Uh, this first one we haven't sang in a while, but it's um, Shout to the North and South. So that's what we want to do this morning is lift your hands and praise, and we're going to worship God with all of our heart, soul, and mind this morning.
you got your Bible this morning, it's going to be a, a little difficult to keep up with me. But uh, it, it's in your bulletin, so you can take it home and look at it. <coughs> We're going to be reading two verses out of the first Kings. Back to Elijah again. Elijah had declared the drought. And he said it would not rain again until he said it did. And it didn't. So Elijah sat by the brook and drank water from the brook. And the ravens brought food brought meat and bread to him, and there's a point that the brook dried up, so God had prepared a widow woman over, and so he went and stayed with the widow woman, and while he was there, they were ready to die because of lack of food, but the, the oil remained, and the meal remained, and they were able to sustain them through the drought. And it's time for uh, Elijah to send word to meet with King Ahab, the king of Israel. So he sent word to Ahab, he said, I want to meet you. And so all this comes about, and finally they meet up. And uh, Ahab looked at Elijah and said, So you're the man that's troubling Israel. You're the man that has brought this famine upon us. You're the man that has caused all these people to die and all these people to suffer this length of time. This In the 17th verse, Elijah looked at him, and he said, No, you're the man. You're the man that built idols in the land of Israel. You're the man that as king, you followed after Baal. You're the man that has let sin invade our country. It's not me that troubled Israel, Ahab. It's you. So he told Ahab, he said, I want you to do this. He said, gather all the people, all of them, all the prophets of Baal, bring them. He said, all the prophets of I can't remember what the word was, but it's forest, something like forest. He said, bring them. And he said, and all the people of Israel, he said, bring them out. I want to see them all. And the 12, uh, 18th verse, chapter, 21st verse, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt you between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. I want to set the scene. At this point in the history of Israel, during King Ahab's reign, it was not a very popular thing to be Christian. Because the mood or the, the worship had left Christ, had left God, and went to Baal. It was the hip thing to do. And the hip thing to do is everybody went to following that way. And Elijah said, I'm going to talk to all the people of Israel because they need to know something. He said, y'all need to know exactly. You can't be the Israel that worships God and the Israel that worships Baal. You need to choose which one of them you're going to be. And Elijah said, if you're going to go with me, he said, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. He said, as far as I know, I'm the only one still standing for God. So you're going to be in a lackluster group of people. There's not going to be a ton of us up here. But I want you to know that there's room for you if you want to come. We go over to the book of Matthew. It says, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. Which is basically what Elijah told him. I thought this morning that church, as God began to deal with me, I'm going to get into Revelations in just a minute. I thought to myself, the time that we never thought would come is here. Some of you older hands, y'all read the Bible and you, you try to understand what Jesus said 2,000 years ago about them hating him and now they're going to hate you. You're, you're going to understand. You never thought you would see the day that you had to hide the fact that you were a Christian. You never thought you'd have to see the day when, when monuments of, of, of Christian people and Christian leaders will be put down to the point that nobody's accepted anymore. And as God began to deal with me this week, it opened my eyes to something I, I really hadn't thought about in a long time, that it's probably the least popular now in the United States to be a Christian than ever before. Do you realize the Christians are what's causing all the hate in the world? Do you realize it's the Christians that has corrupted our United States? It's the Christian things that they're tearing down. It's the Christian things that are so mean and so evil and so judgmental. 
and it has the, uh, the sign, the upside down day, a star of David. Did you see it this week? Where thousands of people showed up and they've got a goat, a man with a goat's head with a big horn and they got the, the star behind them and two little kids are there doing this right here. The satanic worshipers have done it. Now they're attacking Arkansas, so they're going to do everything they can to get it on Arkansas. We've got God out of the schools. We've got God. We're trying to get God off the money. We're taking God out of the uh, our pledges that we do. They're not talking about God in church anymore. And we find out today, even though that Muslims are killing people by the thousands, they are the good people. They are the people of peace. It's us Christians that's dragging the whole world down. In their eyes. Elijah said, the time has come, you need to make up your mind. If God, if Baal be God, he said, let Baal be God. He said, if, but if God's God, let's serve him. We watch our churches decline. We, we watch how the Bible is no longer the word of God anymore. We watch people that are very religious that believe in God but don't believe in His Son that won't accept the cross. We see Christians that are so-called Christians, and I'm not the judge, but they do everything that the world does and still yet calls themselves Christians and that people that are truly Christians are persecuted for His name's sake. I thought to myself as God began to deal with me about this, of the numerous gods that we worship and serve, even in our lives. You know, I once asked God, I said, God, why is it so hard to be a Christian? Because I struggle on this side and I struggle on that side. And God spoke to me this week and I asked that question a long time ago. And he said, the only reason you struggle, he said, because you're divided between one and the other. You're trying to love the world. And love me too. He said it never will work that way. He said remember. Loving God with all your heart. With all your soul. With all your mind. With all your strength. All that I am. He said when you choose me. And walk after my commandments. And walk after my teachings. He said the struggle that you have with the world. Will go away because you'll no longer love that world anymore. And I thought to myself. We fall so in love with the world that we live in. That we want to change it. We want to make it better. We want to make it. But the world sees us as making it evil now because we're judgmental. Matthew said you can't serve two masters. You'll cling to the one, stay away from the other. You'll love the one and you'll hate the other. You say, church, this is pretty morbid, isn't it? It's pretty scary. I believe with all my heart. That in the years that we've lived, it's been very important. But I believe that the days that were as ahead of us is going to become even more important. That we serve God and God only. I, I think it's a time that when folks need to get off of the fence and choose you this day who you're going to serve, who your master is really going to be. Because it is that point that when we choose who we are, the consequences from thereafter is coming. You, you think about, we talk about, we listen about how wicked our world is getting to the point where Christians are, are actually hated for His name's sake. Honey, we live in the South. I can imagine being a pastor in the North or the East Coast. But I want to show you something. We're so shocked by it. So shocked. But thousands of years ago, we knew it was coming. We just didn't believe it. John was on the Isle of Patmos. And the Bible said that God took him up in the spirit up into the third heaven. Revelation chapter 13. We convinced ourselves that the judgment has already happened and these are just people that's left here on earth. That Christians won't have to go through that. Well, let's listen at it. Now, I want you to listen, not his words in the Bible. I want you to see this in 2015. I want you to see it from your heart. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was likened unto a leopard. Don't get confused with the animals. 
and his feet were the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wounds were healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. All the world wondered after the beast, and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is likened unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with who? The saints. And to overcome them. And power was given unto him over the kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose name are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity, and he that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. And here is the patience and the faith of the saints. I want to tell you this morning that church, it's going to get worse, and it's not going to get better. It's going to be where God is a curse. And evil is rejoiced in. It's getting to the point that in this day and time that we have to choose as Christians, we have to choose this day whom we're going to serve because the world is going to grow stronger and stronger and stronger. And we as Christians are going to be thinned out. And there's going to be many that fall by the wayside. But unless your heart is set and set on what you're doing and set on who you're going to be and who you're going to serve and what you're going to do, no matter how cost you no matter what the price may be that I'm going to serve God and I'm going to serve Him alone even if it takes my wife, even if it takes my children, even if I lose my home even if I'm kicked out of my own country, even if I'm beaten, even if I'm crucified, I will be found serving God because He is the God. It might not be the popular way, it might not be the way the world's going, but honey it's going to be the way that is redeemed one of these days it's going to be the way that's called up out of this world and the hell that if people
There's a lot of people who accept God but don't want the Bible. There's a lot of people who accept church if it's church the way they do church. I want you to know I don't care what songs we sing. I don't care what order of worship. As long as we can lift up holy hands in the sanctuary and praise our God, we can do it with anything you want to do it as long as God is where God is supposed to be. You say, well, Brother Mark, I don't worship other gods. I, yeah, you do. We do. I got gods in my life, don't I? You go down and look at my office. One side of it is crosses. Other side of it is Auburn. <laughs> the crosses are on the sidewall. The Auburn's right behind me where everybody can see it. We serve gods in the form of our grandkids. We serve gods in the form of our job. We serve job, a God in the form of our houses. We serve God in the name of our denomination. We serve God in the nice car that we drive. And the nicer things get, the worse we serve them more than we serve God. I got news for you. The windows at the parsonage are nice. I think my fire bill's going to go down. And I know we're staying a lot cooler than we used to be. But I got news for you. I don't care if it's a 12 room mansion. That house is still made out of brick and mortar and plastic. And one of these days it's going to fall. I, I love this church. And right now it's the current place that God's put me. But there's coming a day when y'all don't need me anymore. And the ones that love me now will shut me off for somebody new. Uh, I'll tell you, Patsy loves me and my kids love me. But there's coming a day when they're going to love husbands and wives. And they're going to love kids more than they do me. But I got news for you. God ain't going to move today. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And to worship any other thing, honey, it ain't going to get you nothing but in hell this morning. Choose you this day. You need to go on and read the rest of that story about Elijah and the prophets of Baal. They give him a chance to stand on God's side. If you're waiting for this to become popular, I'm afraid you may be waiting the rest of your life. The people that have followed Jesus. I talked to a pastor a while back, probably a year ago, and he said, Brother Mark, he said, losing people by the dozens. He pastors Gunnerful first. He said he's lost a hundred people out of his church in the last year. I said, wow, a hundred. He said, a hundred. He said, Brother Mark, you think it's young adults? You think it's teenagers? He said, no. Probably 85% of them have been in church all their life. They're just tired of doing the church thing. Just tired of going to church. Would rather ride the boat. Would rather go fishing with the grandkids. People that have been in church 40 years are tired of doing the church thing. He said, people that have served on every board in the church, he said, they're just tired of it. He said, we lost 100 grown men, grown women, Sunday school teachers, elders in the church because they're tired of serving God. He said, they'd rather just serve themselves. Church, I believe God has given us a warning this morning. We dress up in our pretty clothes. We come out to our beautiful building. We sing and, and we have a good time. We sit by our best friends, by our wives. We're part of the church. We're working in the church. The church couldn't do without you. But listen to me. Don't get caught up in worshiping the church either. This church is a building. God is our Savior this morning. And I want you to know this, that as time goes on, you better be ready for a spiritual warfare because something popular is coming and it's more popular than it everything's ever going to be. And if you ain't easy, you're going to put God over to the wayside and think you're going to come back and pick him up later on. He's not going to be there for you to pick him up later on. He said, choose you this day. If there's ever been a time that we needed to be on fire, I believe our country is supposed to go into one of the deepest, darkest spiritual depressions that we've ever been in. And it's going to take those that are grounded, that are rooted, that are knowledgeable, that have built a foundation upon a solid rock that's going to stand. 
He said that he would cut the day short for the very elect's sake. I thought about and read a little bit. I, I know this is doom and gloom. I don't expect y'all to be shouting. <laughs> about taking the mark of the beast. Either in your forehead or in your hand. You say, oh, Brother Mark, what's it going to be? Listen, I don't care what it is. I want you to know this morning when they hold your child and say, you either take it or we're going to take this. Those that are weak, those that are wishy-washy will say, give it to me. When they put your head down on the chalk block and say, either take it we're going to chop your head off. Those that are weak. So I don't know God. You remember Peter? Peter said, I don't know him. He's not my friend. Uh uh, sister, you bad wrong. I've never been seen with him. But the day is coming that we may be persecuted. He said, They hated me before they ever knew you. Church. I got news for you. You better get yourself around it. You better know what you believe. And you better not believe it because the preacher believes it. You better believe it because God's Word says it. And you better take it in your heart and you better let it grow this morning because it's going to continue waxing worse and worse and worse. And I don't know how many years, how many days, how many hours that God is going to let this world continue to go. But I guarantee you this, He's faithful to His Word and He's coming back after those that love Him whose name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And in Revelations, He said that the serpent come and He make war with who? The ones whose name are written there. Don't sell out. If this church, this one, ever gets to the point to where we're lifting anything above God, leave it. If this preacher gets to preaching anything other than God, don't be mad. I pray this morning that you don't take your Bible study time as wasted time. But I pray that you take your Sunday school lesson and see what it says. What is it telling you? How is it feeding your soul? And take your time with God. A lot of times I find myself praying and I pray, oh Heavenly Father, gosh, I need to cut that grass. Anybody with me? Lord, I just wanted to tell oh, I've got to get green beans. Now, you know it's a pretty day outside. Lord, I think I'll go fishing. Wait a minute, why am I here? <coughs> he told us the day was coming. And yet, it's here now. I pray this morning for us. I love to hear you sing. And I love to hear you worship. And I love being in the presence of God. But guess what? It's my job to tell you, you better wake up and look around this morning. Because when that trumpet sounds and when your name's called out, it's going to be a serious day. You're either going to be shouting, saying, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Lord, I've been waiting on you all my life. Can you give me an hour or two? Lord, Lord I, I just, hmm. I've been busy over here. I've been busy. Lord, you just, you know. <coughs> I think the virgins came not having what they needed and they found the door shut. Remember what God's been preaching about not getting caught up in the haze of seeing what was real. What's destroying our world is the lack of love and humility. And today God warns us, you better have your house in order. Because if you got your house in order, Brother Mark, you're scaring me. I'm not trying to scare you. If you're where you need to be this morning, you better back smile.
Because he knew it was coming. But if you're not, Elijah stands before you and says, let's just choose who we're going to serve. And when we make that choice, let's serve him with everything we've got. If I was going to fall away from the church, I'd go get me a girlfriend. I'd get drunk every day. I may even shoot up here when I want to do. I'd go gambling. I'd get me a tattoo of mom right here. I'd live it up. If that's going to be my God, then I'm going to go after it with everything I got. But if God's going to be my God, I'm going to go after it with everything I got. I can't earn my way into heaven, but I can know that my soul is secure to Him because He lives in me. Are you prepared this morning? I remember I'll say this and I'll hush. On oh, Ricky Bubba one time, Rick went on a cruise. Said they were out in the middle of the ocean and everything was going good. The reggae music and he was walking down the thing just jigging the jig and everything was fine until he heard his name come over the intercom and said, you need to come to the purser's office. So he went up there and he said that his credit card had been declined and he didn't have a dime with it because he had paid so much that they could do everything on the ship. And he said, all of a sudden, that music, da, 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 da. <laughs> he said, the music stopped. He said, well, he was going to call Bubba to put some money in his bank account, but it was like $20 an hour to make a phone call from the ship, and he didn't have $20 <coughs> because his credit card had been denied. He said he finally got a hold of somebody to the bank. And they were going to put some money in his account. He said the music started playing again. And said he was out by the promenade just dancing. He said then the person's office called his name on the intercom again. And the music stopped. I say this to say this. this. There's going to come a day when God calls our name. Whatever music we're listening to is going to stop. Because when we stand before God, it's going to be serious. It's going to be eternal. Keep your heart where it needs to be. Be steadfast and unmovable. He's your God. And you are His people. Be what you want to be. Stand with us. <laughs> We preached on love, we preached on humility, and now we've got this. There's no doubt in my mind that God sent this message for somebody, maybe it's just me. If there's somebody that you've been wanting to witness to, if there's somebody in your family or friends that you've been wanting to talk to but you've been putting it off, don't wait till the music stops. It'll be too late. Maybe it's time for you to step up and take church and worshiping God a little more seriously than you have. Maybe it's time to get out of that warfare of being drugged between the two. Maybe it's time to get out of the popular crowd and try the straight gate. It's narrow, and this is going to be a few that find it. Let's get serious with our God. That we may worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let's sing.
lady's been praying for a young man, her grandson. We prayed for him last week. He got a lot better, got to come home. And he liked to die. I hadn't seen anybody. This grandmother's going to stand in gap for her grandson. This morning, this week, this week, I want you to do some inventory. Get you a piece of paper and write down the things that you can't live without. Pray that you go into the Sunday schools right now. Encourage the teachers and let them know it ain't a waste of time. 
I pray for the students going to Sunday school that we may realize that the test is coming when we're going to be questioned about what we learned and who we are. Grow with us a clean heart and a repentant soul that we may be found in your favor. Go with us in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Shake hands, tell somebody you love. So introduce this.